Hello everyone, I'm Robin, and stills come in all different shapes and sizes, but last week I got a question about what I use specifically for distillation. So today we're gonna talk about my still. This right here is Judith. This is my five gallon copper pot still or copper alembic still. Mary the Jewess, who was an alchemist in the somewhere between the first and third century AD, is actually credited with creating the alembic still along with a number of other chemical apparati. She lived in Alexandria and is also considered the first true alchemist of the Western world. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, the Olympic still has been around for a while. So it is a pretty simple apparatus for distillation. Simple yet very effective. So let's talk about the anatomy of uh, Judith here. Like I said, she's a five gallon pot still. So she is made up of a pot an onion head, a line arm that feeds into a worm tub condenser. The pot is what gets filled up with whatever liquid is getting distilled. And then a hot plate is put underneath it. And as this heats up, you can see the temperature gauge in the head of the still, you'll start to see the temperature rise. That's because you're starting to heat up liquid and so the vapors above the liquid are going to start to heat up. You can actually feel as it's heating up where the vapors are because, you know, it'll be hot um, along the line arm. As you can see, the head of the still comes off very easily. That's how it gets loaded up with whatever liquid is being distilled and then the head of the still is just placed right back on it. Now, this should be good to go because there isn't any pressure buildup. There should never be any pressure buildup in your still. However, for peace of mind and to make sure that there aren't any little gaps where vapors can escape, what I do is I create a really complicated uh, sealant for the neck of the still. Um, it's a mixture of flour and water. It creates a really nice paste and then hardens uh, once the still starts to get hot. And that's what I also use to connect the line arm to the condenser. Simply, the way it works is that the liquid is boiled and creates vapors. The vapors that have enough energy travel up the head of the still into the line arm and then come over into the condenser, which is filled with cold water and they are cooled and come out as a liquid. It's very simple. You can think of it like a teapot, but yeah, the vapors that are coming out of the spout of the teapot as it's boiling are cooled down and condensed and come out as a liquid. So Judith is made entirely of copper. So is her worm tub. It's made up of copper. And copper is important in distillation for a number of reasons. One, it's really easy to work with. It's very malleable. So you can create these beautiful, beautiful shapes pretty easily. Two, it's a really good heat conductor. Yeah, so it heats and cools very easily. And three, which might arguably be the most important part, is that copper sequesters sulfur compounds. And sulfur compounds can smell like rotten egg, metallic, fireworks, um, struck match. These are all common examples. And those are not necessarily things that you really want in your distillate, in your whiskey, in your brandy, whatever it is. And during fermentation, the yeast can produce some sulfur compounds. The copper is there and uh, sequesters those. It kind of hangs on to them and they don't come through the distillate as much. So copper contact with the vapors is really very important. My copper alembic still is very similar to what you'll see in Scotland, right? They have these big, beautiful copper stills 
Of course, they're not the same shape as this. This tends to be more of like a brandy still shape. Um, but yeah, it's mostly similar to what they're using in Scotland for their distillations. In the US, it's common to have beer stills to do your distillation, and that is completely different and beyond the scope of this video. And a lot of craft distilleries in the US are starting to use hybrids, hybrid stills that are almost like an Alembic still, but instead have a column on top that helps with refining the spirit. It helps with rectification. Of course, before I head out of here, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of the neat community that we have over on Patreon. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below so you can head over to our Patreon. So yeah, there you have it. That's the breakdown of the distillation apparatus that I use for all of my distillations. Uh, if you have any questions at all, leave me a comment. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.